Buckle your seatbelt, we're going on a wild ride, making an entire month of breakfast, lunches, and snacks in just one day. Recently, I was sick, and I wasn't just sick for a few days, I was sick for a few weeks. And this led to a lot of convenience foods in my household, takeout, stuff like that. And I just didn't really feel great about it. It's okay, I understand, but I'm a person who loves to meal prep but sometimes things get in the way. Truthfully, some Sundays I don't feel like doing it and I don't do it and I put it off till Monday and then it's Monday and I don't do it and I put it off till Tuesday. Suddenly it's Wednesday and I didn't meal prep for the week. These things happen and so we have to take care of uh, inspiration when it arises. So I thought to myself, gee, wouldn't it be nice if I had an entire month's worth of food ready to go for my family for breakfast, lunch, and maybe some snacks uh, every month? And I realized that's bit of an undertaking, but if there's anyone who can do it, it's me because I understand scheduling. So I started comprising a meal plan for an entire month for my husband and I for breakfast and lunches and some breakfast for the kids as well and snacks for the whole family. I was able to put together what we're gonna have for the next month for four weeks of meals uh, for those breakfasts and lunches and then schedule out what it would look like to cook that. It was a super fun experience, at least for me it was. If you're not into that kind of thing, that's great because I've done it for you. In this video, I'm showing you a step-by-step -step process of how to make four weeks of breakfast, lunches, and snacks for your family in about six hours. We're gonna utilize our freezer and not even a chest freezer. I just have a regular old uh, drawer freezer and I only had to use the bottom part of it for this, so. I'm being pretty economical in that way, I think. So if you wanna learn how to make an entire month of food in just one day, stick with me and I'll show you how. So you're gonna be able to find all of the recipes, tips, tricks, and the schedule right on my website. And that's gonna be down in the description box for you. So that should really help you follow along today. And if you wanna do it for yourself, you can just go there and check it out. Okay, so on a prep like this, the first thing you want to do is gather all of your ingredients and it may seem like a lot, um, but it's super helpful to just kind of have everything out. The only things that I don't take out are maybe things that need to stay refrigerated like milk if I know that I'm not using them right away, um, but for the most part, I could take everything out, put it on my counter, and that way I had it when I needed to use it. And I even included this gathering things uh, time in my prep schedule for you so that you don't have to worry about how much time that will take. So we're gonna get started by making some egg bites. And you'll notice I'm using my Good Chop Bacon. It is my favorite bacon. And we're gonna start by slicing that up or you can, you can use a knife or I'm just gonna use kitchen scissors to cut it up into a pan and start to cook it. You just want bite-sized pieces for those egg bites. If you don't have bacon on hand, you can always do sausage or ham or you can just go vegetarian and not do any meats at all. It's all up to you. You make this meal prep for you uh, and your best abilities to kind of use what you have on hand and not have to buy as much. So today I'm going to make 24 egg bites. So that's going to be two kind of sessions in my Nutribullet because it's really only going to fit uh, 12 muffins at a time. I'm using one cup of cottage cheese and then we're going to crack in eight eggs, a little salt and pepper, and then we're just going to blend this right up. Now I just blended it and until it got frothy and then I actually added some cooked broccoli that I already had. I just did kind of one batch with broccoli and another without. And then you just want to grease your muffin tins. One thing that's gonna be important with meal prepping like this is having this spray, because we're gonna do a lot of different things in either muffin pans or nine by 13s, and you want it to slide out really easily. This is the store brand Hannaford in my area. I later use the Dollar Tree kind because I ran out of this and not as good. So I don't recommend Dollar Tree. Try and get either a store brand or a name brand. And then you want to fill these pretty much to full. I find that one of these batches gets me pretty much full muffin tins and they cook up and they puff up a lot. But when they come out of the oven and they cool down, uh, they go down quite a bit. So fill your muffin tins all the way up to the top here uh, with your stuff and then just do another batch and you can put whatever you want in them. And then to each muffin, you add about a tablespoon of shredded cheddar, or you can do mozzarella, Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, whatever you like, whatever you have. Um, and then you also wanna add in the bacon. So I just kind of evenly divided that up, but you can add anything that you like to these egg bites and they're all gonna be good. I've done like scallions before or different types of vegetables. It's all delicious. And then you just wanna bake these in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And we're gonna do this prep all the way through. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing in the meantime. 
So I like to use my rice cooker or it could be a steamer uh, to make hard boiled eggs. I'm just adding some water to the bottom of my steamer pot, putting that right into the steamer and I'm gonna set it for steam for 14 minutes. Then we just put the eggs in the steamer basket. Once it preheats, you put the eggs into the steamer. So when that time is ready, we'll put them in. And in the meantime, we're gonna make some rice because we're making a bunch of bowls. We're getting started with four cups of water because we're gonna do uh, two cups of rice. And just a little tip when you're doing something like this, put your trash can right next to you so it's nice and easy for you or at least get a trash bowl. And then also as you're working and you have a little bit of downtime between things while things are cooking, do the dishes. So I wanted to get my kitchen sink cleaned out as often as possible because there's gonna be so many dishes coming through in the next few hours. And now you see our eggs go in. So you need to kind of wait for it to heat up and then you put the eggs in. It's a process, but it works because the eggs are perfect every time and it really is quite easy. So now we're gonna get started on the teriyaki chicken bowls. So you need a three quarters a cup of water, three quarters a cup of soy sauce, three quarters a cup of honey. I just did a couple shakes of red pepper flakes, but you can do up to a teaspoon if you like it spicier. Then you want two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. That's what's gonna thicken it up. And then two and a half tablespoons of sesame oil. And you just wanna mix that well, basically like whisk it together. And then we're just gonna set that sauce aside. In the meantime, my water came to a boil. So I just added a couple tablespoons of butter and some salt to that. And then we're adding a couple cups of dry rice. I think I did two. I think if I did it again, I would do four. So that's what's in the blog and everything. It says do four, just do a little bit more rice. Wanna mix that together, bring it back to a simmer and then turn it down to low and cover it for about 15 minutes until it's fully cooked through. And the egg bites were done. We can give ourselves a pat on the back for the first thing actually completed out of these many, many things that we're gonna make today. And you can see how easily these just pop out. So you just have to make sure that you really spray that pan down. And if you do it appropriately, it's no problem at all when you make these muffins. And the eggs were also done. So you just wanna pop those into an egg bath. And if you're a glutton for punishment like me, you can just kind of cool your hands off in the ice water as you do it. Or you can use tongs, which is probably a more reasonable thing to do. So now we're gonna work on the veggies for the teriyaki bowls. And I just bought a bunch of broccoli, ended up with a lot of extra. So that was perfect to use kind of for dinners that week anyway. And then I just sliced it up into smaller pieces. You could just buy like a whole head of broccoli if you want to, whatever's cheaper, whatever's easier. Then we're adding about a tablespoon of olive oil to the bottom of a hot pan and pouring in that broccoli as well as a whole package of some sugar snap peas. And then I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. You can use whatever your favorite is. And we're just going to let these saute for about five to seven minutes, stirring pretty frequently. So while the veggies are cooking, I was getting my chicken chopped up. And you'll notice that not only was the bacon good chopped, but this chicken is as well. And you'll see some of the beef later too. I'm always excited when I get my good chop box and I wanna thank them so much for sponsoring today's video. I was extra thrilled with this one because I knew I could plan my monthly meal prep around what I had received. I personally love good chop because the meat is so high quality. A lot of times I need to cut like a lot of fatty pieces off of my grocery store chicken, which I know is like pretty normal, but good chopped chicken is so lean. I love it. I never have to do that. They have over 60 different cuts of meat on their website. It's super easy to use and all the boxes are fully customizable. So you get to choose what you want to pick for your box. I really appreciate that Good Chop sources its meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. My husband and I love their steaks for an at-home date night, and I just love the fact that it's delivered right to my door, so I always have high-quality meat at home. So if you're ready to get your meal prep on and try Good Chop, go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MARIA120, or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your first four boxes. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code MARIA120, or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off your first four boxes. So really this chicken is just beautiful, so easy to cut and it tastes delicious too. So I was just dicing my chicken up while those vegetables cooked and my rice was done perfectly cooked. And this was perfect to get prepping on those meal prep boxes. So for this, you do wanna make sure that you have a bunch of meal prep boxes. Luckily, my grandmother uh, lives in like a independent living where you get your meals. And some of the time when they're delivered, uh, they're delivered in these packages. And she is kind enough to bring these to me so that we always have different like meal prep packages at our house. Uh, but you can also buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link down in my Amazon store. And you can also 
go to the thrift store. So I went to my local thrift store just to check it out and they actually had a package of them. And because I was doing such a large meal prep, I had grabbed a few of them. Uh, so it's just an option to save some money. So once the veggies were done, I just placed those evenly in my meal prep containers. I've got 10 of them, so that's five days for each me and my husband. And we're actually gonna put these ones right in the freezer and have these in a few weeks because I'm gonna make um, the Buddha bowls, which are gonna be something that can't be frozen. So some of the things that I'm making in the prep are gonna be uh, for the current week. And then, and so those things are not like freezable items. And then the freezable things we'll have later in the month. And then when you're cooking this much food, you definitely want to try and use as few pans as possible. So I just used the same pan that was cooking the veggies, put a little bit more olive oil in there, the chicken, salt and peppered it, and then you just want to cook that chicken up until it's fully cooked through. And so while that chicken was cooking, I got my mushrooms out and I started slicing those. We're gonna do peppers, mushrooms, and onions for some Philly cheesesteak bowls. And obviously you can take any of those out if you don't like them. My husband's not a huge fan, but he, I do find that if I cut up the mushrooms and the onions and peppers really small, he doesn't mind them. And I actually really enjoy it that way too. So I just kind of like over slice those mushrooms into really small pieces. The, this amount of mushrooms, I thought this was four cups. And then when I sliced it up, it was like eight cups. So I saved uh, a bunch of them for something else for later meals. We'll do something with dinner with that and the broccoli, probably a stir fry. Uh, so it had way more mushrooms than I needed, but hey, that's fine. We can never have too many mushrooms. I'm a mushroom lover. You comment down below if you're like, I know it's like love them or hate them, right? So you let me know. So by the time I finished cutting the mushrooms and the peppers, my chicken was done. So just mix that sauce back up because some of the cornstarch just kind of settled to the bottom and then pour that in the pan. And this only takes about two minutes. It's amazing what cornstarch will do. It makes this like thick teriyaki sauce that is oh so delicious. It's a really to die for. Uh, so there's so much flavor in this and I was glad I made a little bit extra. So, you know, don't be scared. I put in my recipe to make extra like I did, but a lot of those recipes I find, um, there's not enough sauce. So if you ever see a recipe and it doesn't seem like enough sauce, double it, especially when it comes to like a teriyaki like this. And so we're just gonna add that over to the side on our meal prep boxes. These are looking so beautiful. And then any of the extra sauce, pour that over too, because you want to make sure that you have plenty. And then to finish them off, you can do a little bit of sesame seeds on top, or you could probably wait until after you freeze them and but do that when you uh, cook them up. Your, your choice on that. I'm going to serve these when we uh, put them, we're going to put them in the freezer, and then I will defrost them the week of that we're going to eat them, and then probably heat them for two to three minutes in the microwave to heat them up. And I'm probably gonna put some sriracha on mine. And I think that these are really gonna be absolutely fantastic. I mean, I know how delicious that chicken and sauce is. I mean, the flavors together are really, really gonna be wonderful. And now we're on to cheesesteak bowls. So I cut those mushrooms and the peppers and I just need to slice up two onions really small again. And then we're gonna get beef started in uh, that same pan. I cleaned it out again. I put that put two pounds of ground beef from Good Chop in the bottom and kind of broke that up. And then we're gonna add in all those peppers, onions, and mushrooms and kind of cook it all together. And it was at this point that I realized I really need an like extra, extra large pan for like a big meal prep like this. So I immediately went on Amazon and ordered one. This is the one that I ordered and it is on my Amazon store now. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna, I think it's gonna be good. It had really good reviews and I'm excited to use it in my next big meal prep because I feel like I might become a little bit addicted to this. It's super fun and I'm just so excited to have everything on hand. And then while that cooked, I just needed to actually cover up the chicken meal preps now that they were cooled down. You do kind of want to wait for everything to cool down to cover it and then get started on the Philly cheesesteak ones. So I just put out, I had bowls for these and again, divided up all of the rice. This is where I felt like, okay, I could use a little more rice. So that's why I would recommend four cups next time, just rice it up. And once all of the beef and the vegetables are cooked through and those vegetables are kind of cooked down, there is definitely a lot of extra liquid in here. So I tried to drain out as much as I could. Uh, you're not gonna get it perfect, but that's okay. And then you wanna add in three teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce and a half a cup of beef broth. I just used like a cube of beef bouillon, which I know is a little bit more, um, it's like double the amount that beef broth would be, but more flavor, the better in this is my personal opinion. And then I top this with six slices of like thick cut 
provolone. And if you don't have provolone, you could always use Monterey Jack cheese or cheddar cheese in this too. It's your choice. And then just covered it up so that they melted right into the beef and it was so good. And I got some water started because we're gonna make quinoa right on the stove here for the next bowl. So now we're thinking Buddha bowls. We're heading, heading ahead into a third meal prep option for lunches. And you just wanna follow the package instructions on that quinoa. And after literally 60 seconds, that cheese melted down and I just kind of mixed everything together. And this makes it so cheesy and ooey gooey and flavorful. And we're just gonna serve that right with that rice there. So just put that into the bowls and we pretty much have our Philly cheesesteak prep, not too hard. So next up we're making Buddha bowls and I actually only made one times a recipe because it was kind of midweek when I got started on this, but ideally and in the prep chart, you're gonna make still 10 meals of the Buddha bowl so that you have prep for um, you and your partner uh, for the entire week. So you wanna start by um, peeling sweet potatoes. So I peeled and diced four sweet potatoes and then I had what was left of a red onion. You would probably want to use two red onions, however much you like, but I just was using what I had. You could always use yellow onion with this as well. And then you just want to toss those sweet potatoes with two tablespoons of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of paprika, three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And again, I'm just trying to be resourceful and use what I'm already using. So I just use that spoon to mix everything up. That is less dishes. And then you just wanna take those potatoes and put them on a baking sheet with covered in parchment paper so it doesn't stick. And then we're gonna put the uh, onions with it too. And we're gonna bake these at 425 degrees for about 30 minutes. You just want them to be cooked all the way through. So it kind of depends on how big you dice yours. I diced mine a little bit smaller. 30 minutes was about perfect for me, but you just want to make sure that they're cooked properly. And at this point, the quinoa was done and it got started on my chickpeas while those were baking. So I rinsed and drained the chickpeas and then I added the exact same spices that I did to potatoes. I did one teaspoon of paprika, a drizzle or a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of cumin, three quarters a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. So we got all the same flavors in those. So then I've got a head of kale and you just want to take out the middle parts of the stems. You don't want to eat those, they're really, really crunchy. And then just cut it up pretty good. I mean, think about it. We're eating this kale, so we don't want these big chewy pieces. Just cut it up small enough so you can eat it. And then to a pan over medium heat, I sprayed that down and then added those chickpeas. And we're just gonna kind of heat them up and kind of activate those spices on the outside of them. Uh, that's gonna take about five minutes. So you just wanna kind of stir it every now and then. And then I've got an avocado too for these Buddha bowls. These are not gonna be freezer friendly, at least with the avocado, I don't think. I mean, avocado freezes, but it's just not gonna taste good if you take it out and then defrost it, right? Uh, so I'm gonna slice that avocado up. We're gonna put those in the bowls later. So in the recipe I published, everything is doubled that I was saying before, so don't worry. Uh, I'm just making that one time serving and even then I'm only making four bowls just because that's how many days we had left in the week uh, versus five. So they're kind of heftier bowls, if you will, but still really delicious. So I'm just topping the quinoa with equal portions of the chickpeas that are cooked up now. And again, we're gonna use the same pan. I just put a little bit of oil in the bottom of it and then I'm just gonna cook up and saute the kale for just a few minutes until it wilts down. It's gonna help with the crunch, like raw kale is a little tough, um, but if you cook it a little bit, it still has a crunchy flavor to it, but it's not as tough as raw. So at this point with these, all we have left to do is finish the assembly, you put the kale on, then the sweet potatoes came out of the oven just about the same time. So the timing is all perfect and then put the avocado on top of that. And then we are gonna make a delicious dressing to go over the top. So this is a lemon tahini dressing. So I had some tahini in my closet, thank goodness, that I had never used and it was still good. So I was excited to try it out. We're doing a quarter cup of tahini with one tablespoon of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of maple syrup, the juice of a lemon, and one and a half teaspoons of minced garlic, and then two tablespoons of water. And you wanna shake this really well. So you either wanna use a mason jar like I am or like a dressing jar that you can really get going on. The first time I shook it up, I thought it was ready and fully mixed, but it was actually too watery. The tahini is really difficult to kind of get mixed up in there and thicken it up. Uh, so just keep shaking, keep going. And once I, fully shook it and got everything mixed together. It was such a beautiful dressing. It's so delicious. These are really incredible. So these are the ones we're not gonna freeze. You're just gonna eat those that first week of, uh, but so fresh and so amazing. 
So next we're gonna make a farmer's omelet. So this will be one of our breakfast choices. You see we did kind of all the, almost all the lunches and now we're gonna get started on some breakfast. You're gonna want about a half a cup of sliced scallions. I started with a quarter cup for some reason in my head and then I ended up slicing more later. So that's just the start of those delicious scallions. And then I shredded up a couple of cups of Monterey Jack cheese. If you have the shredded kind, that's fine too. I just find it's cheaper to buy the block and it, I already had this on hand, so I wasn't gonna go out and buy anything. But in this case, I understand maybe buying the pre-shredded just because we're saving time, right? We're already doing so much cooking. We're already saving ourselves so much money that if you spent a little bit extra on the shredded cheese, I won't tell anybody. And then in a bowl, we're gonna crack in eight eggs. And then you want one can of evaporated milk and a half a cup of whole milk. That's I just use the whole milk because that's what I had on hand. If you have another can of evaporated milk, you could use that as well and it'd be just fine. And then salt and pepper, just like you would salt and pepper your scrambled eggs, like a quarter teaspoon of each. And then just mix that together really well. Then I've got a big pack of frozen shredded hash browns. I'm just putting about five cups in the bottom of the pan. You kind of want to cover that really well. And then I totally took the easy way on the ham. So I didn't on the cheese, but I bought the pre-cube stuff. And then putting a couple of cups right on top of those hash browns. And then we're going to cover that with our scallions and all of that shredded cheese. And then right on top of that, you just want to pour all of the egg mixture. We're actually going to set this in the fridge for a couple of hours or overnight. So I did my preps in uh, two portions. I did one one night and then I woke up the next morning and did more just to give myself a little break because it is a almost six hour stretch of cooking. Uh, but if you're going straight through, that's fine. You can put it in the fridge and then you're just going to cook it at the end. The next thing we're going to do and the last thing that I did on night one of meal prep is make some overnight oats. They are peanut butter banana. They're actually so incredibly delicious. And these are also the thing that you're going to eat for breakfast that first week because they really can't be frozen. So you just want to start with a tablespoon of peanut butter or you could use almond butter, any type of nut butter or even like not a nut butter that you want to use. One tablespoon of maple syrup. You could also use honey in this three tablespoons of milk. You could use almond milk. I'm just using whole milk because that's what we have. A quarter cup of mashed ripe bananas. I ended up using my freezer bananas and they were actually so delicious. So whatever way you want to do it, I mean, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but the thing is you're going to mash it all up. So it's fine. And then a third a cup of old fashioned oats in each one. And then you just want to mix them really well. You see, I didn't even use like fancy containers for these because I didn't have them. I just used the small containers that I had. It doesn't matter. No one's going to see it but me, except for everyone who's watching this video. Oops. But I don't need to be special for you and you don't need to be special for anyone else. Just use what you have. No need, no need to spend extra money. So mix it up really well. And these are really, really delicious breakfast. Okay, so it's day two of meal prep. And another reason why I had to wait till the next day was that I actually ran out of uh, freezer bananas. <laughs> And I needed some mushy bananas. And this is a reminder that you can actually grab bananas on clearance sometimes that are going bad. So that next time that I went to cook, my casserole was ready. So I took it out 30 minutes before I wanted to bake it. If you want to do this all in one day, just go to the blog and you can kind of see the schedule of how that would work out best. So when you do bake this, you want to bake it at about 350 degrees for about an hour. You want to make sure that those eggs are set. So that's just going to go in there for a little while. I'm turning it sideways because we're going to put some other stuff in there too. And I have pulled out my second set of ingredients. We're going to do some protein granola, some baked oatmeal, sheet pan pancakes, bagel bites, and blueberry banana muffins, as well as some sweet potato, black bean, chili. So while that farmer's casserole cooks, we're going to do some protein granola. This is like my favorite protein granola. It's super easy and super delicious. You want four cups of rolled oats. You're going to mix that with one cup of vanilla protein powder. You can use whatever your favorite is. I really like the Naked. I've also done the Bellway. Then about three quarters of a cup of peanut butter, half a cup of maple syrup, and then at the end, if you want to, you can add in things like dried fruit or dried nuts. So you just want to mix this really well until everything is just really well incorporated. You're kind of going to know when like all of those oats are kind of coated and it's not going to be perfect. They're going to be some clumps and then some parts that are more dry and that's okay. So just give it the best mix that you possibly can. You're going to see it's going to look like granola. And so don't add in any of those add-ins. That's going to come after you cook it. 
We're making two sheet pans worth of granola here. So you're gonna to wanna to put half on one sheet pan and half on another. And I actually ran out of parchment paper. So I ended up using one of the silicone mats and that worked really well too. So you can use either parchment paper or silicone mats on a baking sheet. And you just wanna spread it out as evenly as possible. You want it to be kind of a thin layer so that everything gets toasted. And when there is space in the oven, I think I was able to do like half at a time there. Uh, you want to put it in for 15 minutes at 350 degrees, which it already is at from the uh, farmer's casserole for 15 minutes. And you're going to sh stir it halfway through. And while that bakes, we're going to get started on the baked oatmeal. So you want to start with two bananas. You want some pretty ripe ones. I had the ones that I got from the grocery store, which it's funny because you would think that they were pretty mushy, you know, maybe ready for banana bread, but they weren't. They look great. Bananas, bananas can be deceiving. Like these, I would feed these to my kids any day. Anyway, mash up two bananas and then you want to add two cups of unsweetened almond milk. I used vanilla, a half a cup of peanut butter, a half a cup of maple syrup, and a half a cup of oil. Mix that all together really well and then sprinkle on two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and one teaspoon of salt. And then give that another really good mix. Then we're gonna add in two cups of old fashioned oats and two cups of instant oats. So I just put mine all into one measuring cup, poured it right in with two cups of pecans and two cups of blueberries. And you can use fresh or frozen blueberries. You can use really any berries that you have on hand or anyone you can you can you want to use. You could use strawberries, blackberries, they're all good. And as far as the pecans go, if you don't like nuts, go ahead. You don't have to put them in there. Or you could use like walnuts, that might be good too. I think pecans is probably the best, but it's there are different options. And at this point, the first tray of granola was done. Farmer's casserole is still cooking, so I put the second tray of granola right in there. But you can see how delicious and crunchy this turns out. And this is the point at which if you wanted to add some dried fruit or nuts, or even once it really cools down, some chocolate chips, you can put those in there. And continuing with the baked oatmeal, I just sprayed down an 11 by 17 pan. We're making quite a bit, uh, big uh batch of this and then you just want to pour all of that oatmeal right into that pan and kind of even it out and then we're going to top that with a few more blueberries a few more pecans two to four tablespoons of toasted coconut flakes or just coconut flakes i did kind of light on that because i'm not a huge coconut fan and then four tablespoons of brown sugar and i put plenty of that on because i love brown sugar and we're just going to let that sit until it's ready to go in the oven and then we're going to get started with some blueberry banana muffins. So we're going to kind of get all that batter ready as well. So you just want to mash up six bananas. We're going to make 24 muffins today. So this is twice our regular recipe. And then to the mashed bananas, you want to add two eggs and give that a good mix. And at this point, it was time to take the granola out and then put the baked oatmeal into the oven. So it was kind of like perfect timing. And then we'll just keep going with the uh, banana muffins. The farmer's omelet was almost done, but just not quite there yet. So back to the banana muffins, just mixing those up. I've got a cup and a half of sugar. And then on top of that, I'm just gonna pour in three cups of flour and two teaspoons of baking powder two teaspoons of baking soda and a teaspoon of salt and kind of like mix that together on top of the mixture. You could totally do it separate, but again, in the essence of using as little dishes as possible, I'm just gonna kind of mix it on top of the wet mixture and then mix it in. Uh, and I think that worked out just fine. So sometimes I'm not the uh, most pristine baker, but my food always turns out good. So I think it works out. And then you wanna fold in two cups of blueberries. I had fresh, but you can use frozen. I've used frozen in this recipe a million times. It turns out great. Just the uh, muffins turn out a little bit purple, like a little blue, and that's fine too. It's kind of fun. And now the farmer's casserole was finally done. You can tell it's fully set here. It looks beautiful. It tastes amazing. Obviously I grabbed a little morsel of this before I popped it in my freezer but it's so delicious, totally worth the wait. All right, lots of back and forth here, which makes sense. We're doing a lot of baking, so it's a lot of in and out of the oven. So you wanna spray down your muffin pan. You can see I was able to clean these muffin tins. They're the same ones that I use for the egg bites. No problem, everything came right out. So it's the amazing thing about spraying things properly. And then to fill the tins, I like to use a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop and kind of go through all 24 and then kind of refill them with about a half a scoop. 
I'm not exactly sure how much that exactly evens out to, but they almost fill completely up at the end. It's like almost to the brim and that is perfect. You're going to make a perfect 24. They're going to be all pretty much the same size and they turn out amazing. And the timing on this is just perfect because that farmer's casserole came out. I was able to slide both of these into one rack uh, and you're going to bake these for 20 minutes. And while those are baking, it's time for more baking. You guessed it. We want five cups of flour in the bottom of a bowl. We're going to make some sheet pan pancakes. My kids have absolutely fallen in love with these. They have completely disowned waffles and they don't like regular pancakes anymore. And it's crazy how fluffy these turn out. You know, you're always looking for like a fluffy pancake and it makes so many. So it's so easy for me to just make this like once a week and they're done. So we're going to make two sheet pans full so that we have a bunch of them for the month. And to that flour, you want to add four tablespoons of sugar, four tablespoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to kind of, I mean, you kind of make a well in the middle, but you can't really because there's just so much liquid going to be added to this. We're adding four cups of milk, four eggs, and six tablespoons of melted butter with two tablespoons of vanilla. And then just give that a good mix. You're going to mix everything together. So this makes a ton of batter. And then we got another interruption. The baked oatmeal was finished. You can see those muffins are still cooking but that's okay. This baked oatmeal needs to come out. It is literally so beautiful. It's one of the most gorgeous things I've ever made, I swear. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. I just think it's so pretty and it just looks so flavorful and believe me, it is. And for me at least, I needed to make sure that my sheet pans were available again in order to make my sheet pan pancakes. So I had to package up my granola. I put part of it in just an airtight container to keep for the week. And then the other half of it, I froze and I initially put it into a gallon container, but you'll see later, I actually end up using a food saver to vacuum pack it. And that's actually the best way to freeze granola. So if you have a food saver and you can vacuum pack, that is the way to go. And at this point, the muffins were done and ready to come out of the oven. So we have like so many baked goods now and look how beautiful they are. They're really fantastic. And now I'm just prepping my sheet pans for those sheet pan pancakes. And this is where I was kind of annoyed with the Dollar Tree spray. It was making a lot of noise and it seemed like there was stuff coming out, but I really feel like it might've been actually out of the actual uh, oil that was in there. Like, I don't really know what was spraying on there. It was very odd. Anyway, won't be buying it again. And then when I made the pancakes, usually they come right out of the pan and they were kind of sticking. So I think it'll be okay, but just kind of not my favorite. Then you just pour the pancake batter into your sheet pans and you can actually use like a spatula to kind of get it spread out really evenly. Uh, you definitely want to do that because you don't want to like puff up in the middle and it won't spread out on its own, but it does puff up quite a bit. I showed you earlier, so it's worth it. And then I decided to just do half uh, chocolate chip and half blueberry. I just used some frozen blueberries that I had left in my freezer. You can put whatever you want on these. You could do banana, you could do strawberry, you can do whatever you have on hand, whatever you love in your pancakes. And if you can believe it, the timing is perfect. The oven is available yet again. And when I remove those muffins, I increase the temperature to 425 degrees. So we're just going to bake these at 425 for 17 minutes. And we are hitting the home stretch here. Only a few more things to do. So I'm slicing up two onions. We're going to make some black bean sweet potato chili. That is the final lunch out of four weeks of lunches that we're making. So after two diced onions, you need two diced sweet potatoes. I was going to do three, but the first one that I peeled it just didn't look nice you can see so i decided we're not going to use that one so i just diced up the two really good ones and at that point my uh, sheet pan pancakes were done you can see those little cracks in there that's how you know it's finished and then in a soup pot over medium heat, I've got some oil going. I'm gonna add in those onions and those sweet potatoes and cook for about four minutes, just until that onion is kind of softened. Then we're gonna add in eight, clo eight cloves of minced garlic. I just did like eight t big teaspoons of the garlic from the jar, because it was easy. Four tablespoons of chili powder and eight teaspoons of cumin and a half a teaspoon of salt. And just kind of cook that for just a second until it's fragrant. Then we add five cups of water. And at that point, you wanna let everything cook together 
for about 12 minutes just like at a gentle simmer and at that point i got started on the bagel bites so you're going to want two packages of pillsbury southern style grand biscuits it's super important that they're the southern style ones and not the flaky ones because those just really won't work for this and it believe me it's not a cooking experience with pillsbury if you don't get scared by the can it's like you know the can's going to open but every time it gets me i always jump i don't know why <laughs> you can comment if you feel like that's crazy or you also don't know why you get surprised every time and then you need two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese we're gonna make 32 of these so each package of the grands actually makes 16 so each package of cream cheese needs to be cut into 16 pieces so I just cut it down the middle and then I cut it down the middle again and then I cut that into uh, four again down the middle again on both sides and then on the other sides also down the middle and that gives you a nice even 16 slices it's not super easy to work with because it's still cream cheese uh, but it does kind of give you a basic guideline for how much cream cheese should go in each one then you just want to take each of the biscuits and rip them in half it really doesn't have to be perfect these are pretty forgiving and then you want to kind of flatten out each of the halves and put a piece of the cream cheese in the middle and then roll the uh, circle around that so that it makes a ball and so you basically want to enclose the cream cheese inside of this and you're going to do that 32 times to make 32 different little cream cheese bites and then I have a toaster oven type air fryer, which I love, love, love. I use it all the time. And I think the benefit of it is that you have more space. So I could do a whole 16 of these bites on this tray at a time. So I just had to do two different sessions of it. I will link the air fryer that I have down in my Amazon store if you're interested in getting something larger maybe. And then each of them you want to uh, put an egg wash on. So I just took one egg and scrambled it up and then used a silicone brush to put paint that egg right on top of there. And then you don't have to put anything on top, but I love everything bagel seasoning. And so does my six-year-old. He's the one that is in love with these bagel bites. So I put plenty of their, that on there. And then you wanna air fry these at 360 degrees for about nine minutes. And yet again, the timing was perfect. So now it's time to add some diced tomatoes with green chilies and some regular diced tomatoes to my chili. And yeah, you don't wanna add the actual top to the soup can. So just a less of a warning. And then I did one drained can of corn and added my black beans which were frozen for me so it's probably three to four cans um, you could always switch out some pinto beans too if that's what you have on hand or even kidney beans chili's pretty forgiving like that so that's why i love making it especially as a budget friendly choice and then i just let that simmer for 20 more minutes uh, i just wanted to cook down a little bit so it's your choice kind of how long you want to cook it you could probably cook it as little as 10 minutes but you can go longer if you want it to be thicker in the meantime, I created and cooked my second batch of bagel bites, uh, but this is what they turn out when they're finished. And you can see the chili as it's cooked down, it's much thicker and heartier, and this is absolutely so delicious. And you can see at the end here, we're kind of getting to the misfit containers, but that's okay. What is key here is that we've made a bunch of food, we're able to eat for the month, we're saving money, we are saving stress, and we have everything that we need to eat well. It, all that's really left to do is to box and container everything up uh, for the next month and kind of clean out the bottom of the freezer and get everything in there. I don't even have a chest freezer. I was able to fit all of this into the bottom of my drawer freezer. So I hope that that's an encouragement to you. Uh, if you're concerned that you're not gonna be able to keep all this stuff, uh, if you don't have too much in your freezer and you can clean things out, you can definitely make it work. And I did just wanna show you, I did end up using my food saver to vacuum pack a few things. This is really easy to use and these these are like the rolls so you can kind of create your own size bags i don't use it that often so i was not super familiar with how to do it but i figured it out and it's like anybody can do it but i do think that it's great because i was able to vacuum pack the granola uh, and even like lightly vacuum pack the muffins i didn't want to like go really tight with them because i want them to be puffy um, but you can do that like you have a choice of how much you take out of there and i think that it's going to really keep them nicely in the freezer 
and I did it and I'm hoping that you can do it too. So if you're looking for additional resources, the schedule, or if you're looking for even more, go to my blog and you can find everything you need there. And don't forget to get your own Good Chop box. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube. Use code MARIA120 to get $120 off across your first four boxes.